Take a sip. This water kind of um, reminds me of uh, cottage cheese. cheese. Cottage cheese. Yeah, because it's like um, it's like sour and salty. <laughs> sour and salty. Co- cottage cheese is a Hüttenkäse. Hüttenkäse. Yeah. Have you had it before? Yep, I had it. I used to eat a lot, and it was really good. <laughs> I see the glow in your eyes. <laughs> like, oh, what did I do to me? I cannot eat any more cottage cheese. Well, because like it These was days are over. Because it was supposed to be the like, it's like high in protein, so it was supposed to be like the good cheese. So like, if you want a midnight snack, you want something that's more high in protein. So uh-huh. cottage cheese was one of them. And oh, I guess I should yeah. So I put like apple cider vinegar and sea salt and um himalayan salt in my (laughs) in my water and that just gives me electrolytes and stuff and it kind of tastes like cottage cheese (laughs) without the texture just like taste like the sour salty taste you can become like a salesperson for cottage cheese or for different salts here try some pink himalayan salt I mean, it's amazing. Like we watch uh, the documentary on salt and how much it like varies according to production and country, right? It, yeah, but I'm still not really that much of an expert. <laughs> yeah, but think about it. I mean, you can have how many different types of salt can you can you have? Like I don't know. hundreds, probably. Yeah, well, it just depends on like the minerals that are in the area, and I don't know. Maybe I got my foot cramp in the uh, in the podcast crisis because I didn't have in, enough of it, right? No, as I told you, like you probably didn't have enough electrolytes, mm-hmm. but you were also sitting on your legs. Yeah, that's true. But these days are over. We are on the on the couch now. The days on the ground are gone. I feel like that, uh, like you getting leg cramps is like traumatizing or something because <laughs> you always bring it up. <laughs> yeah, it's just painful. <laughs> it's not like it comes it, it, it i don't know like for me i have it when i work out a lot and then i start sweating and then of course like i'm missing on electrolytes but then still they come when they come they it's it's so sudden like mm-hmm. it's like an aura and then it starts like the whole like the whole body is 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 in a state of shock is it cramps or is it like that pins and needles feeling no, it's really like cramp. Like the the whole muscle is like oh. it's like cramping, and then it's, mm. it's it, it feels like like five minutes, but oh, it's actually okay. just like ten, 10 I thought twenty you're, seconds, maybe max. Yeah, I thought you were just having like a pins and needles feeling, and I was like, okay, no, like you can feel that's it. That's a bit dramatic. <laughs> you can feel it like two days afterwards. Yeah, yeah. But I always had the problem, like when I when I played soccer, like indoors, for instance, I I get it a lot, and yeah. so now I do like check that I eat a lot of like pretzels or stuff like stuff that I really enjoy eating, or I I get like uh, banana. That's why people call me banana man because I'm always do like they having. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah you are eating. You are always eating bananas. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm kind of like addicted to it. It's it's I I don't know. Maybe it's like psychologically uh ingrained or so like bananas are also good they they are good yeah but it's it's still something like for for me psychologically i I just have to to know that it's there in case i really need it Mm -hmm. speaking of which we had the the announcement for for uh psychology stuff or something like announcement yeah last podcast remember in the end we talked about it like social uh psychology experiments oh, right, right, right. and i kept thinking a, a bit about like how or what because i i read so like you study psychology and i also like took, like some I took cor- classes in yeah, it you took a, i studied <laughs> it also a bit and it's it's just fascinating it's just like fast, like mm-hmm. how much we are still shaped by our bodies and like the stuff that they find out it's still it's, it's just so interesting mm-hmm. anything you remember like or a cool i know i remember quite a few things um i think the one that i like to tell people the most is how they um there was an experiment that wanted to test whether um social rejection caused the same um 
like is is the same thing as physical pain. Mm-hmm. So what they did is that they had a person come in and they were supposed to use like a, a like a, a simulated game of like they told them that there were two other people in like in different locations so remotely uh-huh, yeah. and they were playing like a game of pass with a ball or something just as through a like a computer game mm-hmm. and so like you would just pass the ball to the two other people yeah and at the same time they're measuring your brain waves and stuff like that and then at one point the two assumingly other people which are actually just computer programs they stop passing the ball to you and they just are passing the ball to each other. Ah, okay. And then they measured oh, I like the this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and they measured like the brain waves of like I don't remember what they used to measure exactly, but they measured the that person's brain and um, they found out that the same part of your brain that handles social rejection is is um, it overlaps with the part of your brain that experiences physical pain. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Never heard about this one. It's so sad. So, like, they got, like... <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, like, to, like, describing, and they're like, yeah, you're just going to play catch, and then all of a sudden, they're not going to pass the ball to you. <laughs> it's like, from now on, you're not part of the group anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you're out of it. It's like getting fired from a company or so, like... Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, no, what's going on? Like... No, but this one's no even, one like, worse. Be- yeah. It's because, like, it's, like, the most simple... Like the most simple task. It's not like, okay, this is really complicated. Like you can't handle it. It's just like, imagine you being a kid when you're, I don't know, five and you're playing pass with your friends. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you start getting ignored. I feel like that's like one of the worst feelings. I think that is like this, I think it's called prospect theory where uh, also like some of these implications show that like our biggest fear is like this rejection or fear of like, losses we are just so so averse to losses and like the it, it's just something in in our what are you looking at in our, checking the settings. in our brain that really fears about like losses more than than anything like it's just like especially if you have a certain standard and then you are afraid of losing it i think that that is really something maybe from our ancestry or something that that really shocks us i think and and, and the fear of it is just like so um, like overwhelming for 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 a lot of us Mm -hmm. and like humans in general are social beings so we kind of rely on being social to survive yeah we have to yeah Mm -hmm. so being rejected is kind of like um it's just like if you're rejected then it kind of goes back to this whole um needing more to survive or mm. whatever yeah you depend on your group i mean that's i think we were so successful unlike like uh, the the nenathalians and our like closest i think that there are some theories that it's like the the small group like the numbers of uh, humans were limited for maybe like 20 30 or so and then i i think that they so there was a social bond between them because it's like a middle i, I would call it middle sized groups mm-hmm. and then they were successful by cooperation i think cooperation is like key for survival of of our species mm-hmm. and then fearing of like not being part of the group anymore causes so much like this like you can feel like the pain probably already or anticipate the pain mm-hmm. of maybe like dying somewhere alone on the field or in the in the woods or somewhere like getting eaten by 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 a uh, savage animal or something like that <laughs> and that's not cool <laughs> that's not nice yeah, it's not nice no like the the imagination play plays its own role but does it have a a, a name because all uh, like i think the, the most famous of those social psych- uh, psychological experiments they always have a name or um or is it just a play ball experiment i have the paper saved somewhere i just have to, i don't remember what it was called mm-hmm. though but i do have it saved somewhere just because i found it interesting mm-hmm. But yeah, no, there are quite a, there are quite a few that I remember. One more. One more. Um, 
I think it was that uh, I'm try- I don't want to like mess up the details. I think they had like a group of oh oh here's one here's a quick one. So um, they had a cockroach mm. and it had to um, do it had to like perform a task and there are two cases. So in one the cockroach was not being observed by other cockroaches. <laughs> so like they almost had like a viewing platform or I guess or something with other cockroaches. Mm-hmm. And then there's one where the cockroach did it by itself. The cockroach performed better at a task that was simple when other people were watching it because I guess it wanted to perform, perform better. Well, yeah. But it did worse on a more complex task when it was being observed. Ah, uh, oh, that's that, that's also interesting. Mm-hmm. So it's like this fear when, let's say, you do a test and then uh, you want to do well on it, but then you know, like, there is pressure and people are observing you. There's also like this, maybe this fear of 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 not being part of the group anymore, mm-hmm. and like the, all the the tests are so much about like, yeah, failure would be would would cause like so like harsh consequences like i think your brain like starts exaggerating the the effects of it then i didn't even realize that cockroaches cared about what others think of it (laughs) yeah that's that's another thing (laughs) (laughs) i think that was like one of the like when i heard about this one i was like wow yeah like i guess that has something to say about uh, like how we perform and i was like but also cockroaches ah, yeah. they get self-conscious <laughs> i i like the more you think about it like the animal world is so much more alike and it's it's so much more complex than we probably think it is and like birds with their different chants I, I read something about like like how they communicate it's like s- some species have 40 50 different really complex also from th- from the tonality different ways how they attract them and and they they perform like incredibly like complex ways to seduce a part or two to perform on on the on the female and start to impress them and they are do you, dances are you talking about like that one dancing video yeah the dancing video from wait from, describe from, describe the video yeah it's pretty much I, the, um, what was it like the a netflix doku the on our earth i think and they had different parts one was in the rainforest and so so the birds they were showing were uh, trying to impress there were i think three or four of them and they are trying to impress the the female and they did an incredibly like elaborated dance like they they were like shifting their positions and jumping on the others and like doing like something really crazy about like when you watch it it's mesmerizing it's just how much they put effort into it and how detailed it was that's yeah i remember it reminded me a bit of like the the, the clubbing <laughs> like do you three have like or a four di- three or four guys trying to perform well and then like the other like in the end like the, the female bird like just goes away like oh yeah. what's going on like, i remember, remember when you just like described like you're like yeah like this is video with birds and like they do a dance i'm like yeah birds do a dance for like other birds but then i saw the video and i was like oh damn <laughs> like it's like they actually like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it was almost as if they were like trained Mm-hmm. Like, you know, when you have, like, those dog shows or whatever? Oh, yeah. And, like, it was almost as if they had taken a bird and, like, trained it how to do, like, certain moves. But, no, just does that on instinct. Yeah, it's instincts and it's learned stuff. They they pass on through generations. And I think, yeah, it's just fascinating. Like, birds do that. And, like, when you think about the animal world, how much they evolutionary uh, evolution was uh yeah shaping their behavior to to become successful in in terms of mating basically mm-hmm. it's 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 just really amazing i think we still underestimate how much like nature shapes us i mean now there are all these books like thinking fast and slow and the uh all these like social psychology experiments but i think we are still like 
just tasting or, or uh, experiencing just just like a tip of how much like the natural world can what what we can learn from from it right mm -hmm. and i think like what 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 i feel is still like animals can do so much stuff and and actually they have like special skills like they can fly or they can dive or they can run super fast whereas like as humans we can do i think basically our uh benefit was always like this uh big hunt like um, making a prey like hunting prey on long distance but still like it's I don't know if that if, if that's our special skill, like our Superman skill, but yeah, like I think in terms of we we are definitely disadvantaged physically, but we're very advanced in terms of mental capacity. And yeah, and, and, and it's a cooperation in this way, like like this big hunt. Cooperation, yeah. It's 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 not one, and that's going back to this question: what differentiates us or? Uh, uh, maybe also the social uh, psychology experiments that is something that we are probably depending on for our survival like th there is a cooperation in like this big hunt where like individuals tr have to cooperate to 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 be fed by by uh, hunting hunting their prey together yeah. like and so there are some some of these theories that I think when I remember it correctly, that they even think that that probably distinguishes us from Nenathalians and all the other like Homo, whatever, Denisova, Homo, Floriensis, all these other species that went extinct, whereas our species is still alive, right? Mm -hmm. And then also we learned to use other things to like get the job done for us, mm -hmm. whereas we on our own wouldn't be able to. Mm. And that's how you get to the world today that's falling apart. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, I mean, look at companies. It's also depending on corporation and politics. But then I think if it goes to this global level, I think that's, that's when it gets really complicated because you have groups and you have your group identity but then it stops at a certain level. Like the the th main thing about these group theories. What do you mean by group identity? You, you identify, let's say, to your group or to your to your neighborhood. But I think the main problem nowadays is more uh, this uh, yeah co complexity of like uh, the globe where you see everything, but you you cannot maybe identify with with a lot of the stuff that's going on in in different nations or di different continents and that's why it, it gets so like i think people so, some people need this uh, uh or lacking this group identity that, that's why they go back into like the nation state and stuff really? like that. i feel like things are even more connected than ever because of the internet yeah, they are. But then there are these people that are trying to go back to the nation, like nationalism and stuff like that. I think they, they those are the people that are not seeing the cooperation or they're lacking cooperation. And then they they rely on the nation. That's why nationalism is so strong right now in, in some parts, not, not everywhere. But, um, but I think, yeah... Yeah, mainly depends on on the way how we act right now. Also depends on these group settings and uh, or or lack of of perspective of it. Mm -hmm. Any more experiments you remember or? Um. Yeah. Like I, there are more. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't know which ones you want to hear. Like, which ones? Are, what kinds are you interested in hearing? Is it like supposed to be story time with Janine? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you the story about the no, it's like and cocaine. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, yeah, the I or the I monkeys know. and the water. Do you know about that one? No. It's like um, they had a group of monkeys, and I believe if they tried to. Oh, actually, this is like I'm. I'm starting to like remember a whole bunch of other ones. I'll stick with this one. They, they with the first group, it it came with like different 
generations almost of of mm. monkeys and so the first i guess generation which is just the first group they had a punishment if the monkeys did something i can't remember exactly i feel like is it's like if they tried to get the bananas from like a certain place then all the monkeys would be dumped like they would have water dumped in them yeah so that happened and they learned to not do this action because if they did it then all the monkeys would suffer so what happened uh, maybe it's not even, maybe it's not monkeys it's some sort of chimpanzee maybe i'm not sure exactly what species and i'm very bad at remembering what are monkeys and what are not monkeys yeah primates let's call them <laughs> primates yeah that's that's perfect um but i'm gonna say monkeys for simplicity <laughs> <laughs> um and basically so when they would see a monkey approaching or like getting close to doing this action i can't remember i don't know if it's climbing something or getting they, it was a bad action they would all like beat up that monkey oh, yeah. so that they like so the monkey wouldn't do it and then what they would slowly do so like so that monkey would like learn not to do that and they would slowly switch out monkeys so they would get rid of one and replace it with a brand new one yeah and um over time all these newer people would learn the new rule that you're not supposed to do this action the mm -hmm. only thing though is that at a certain point that action never actually triggered the punishment that would like dump water on all the monkeys okay but the monkeys had this um they had reached a point where none of the monkeys there were the original monkeys yeah but they had all learned not to do this action because somebody had told them not to do it even though they had never actually experienced this punishment themselves. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I so I guess this is kind of like how, maybe how like religion is passed down or myth and, um, I don't know, other things are passed down where you kind of, one person says something and every it, like it just keeps getting passed down. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. Could be, yeah. Mythology, religion, all these man-made uh, or... Superstition. Now, yeah, maybe superstition, but I think that religion has a uh, also biological reason. Now, this, did you hear about like memes? Like Richard Dawkins, he, he writes about memes, like stories that are like basically if you see religion not like as something like definite or something like like a, a, a narration or a story it has a certain sense to it like for our survival i think he just like the memes are basically like stories that we need wait memes 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 like internet memes yeah like memes yeah okay. like he calls them memes like that, that was before i think the internet mm -hmm. even like not before the internet existed but before the the internet meme existed mm -hmm. i think that was in the beginning of the 90s or so mm -hmm. And so, so those memes, uh, yeah, they exist for a reason, basically. They, like, these are stories that have some meaning, like, for instance, like, the, the maybe Sodom and Gomorrah had a meaning for, for also, like, the group, or let's say, like, the, the flood, like, the, this, this flood was basically in a lot of religions i think like the one with noah's ark and yeah stuff. noah's ark uh -huh. and, and this story so they these are maybe like stories that were anchored like there was a flood and it, it should l remind us about being humble uh, humble in terms of like our uh nature or something like that but mm -hmm. i mean of course they couldn't explain the the scientific reason for some some of the stuff because th there was a flood probably like somewhere like a flooding or sometimes it was a volcano or there was like plagues and they had a reason maybe for domestication or so and yeah i think that for for the for the people that doing living this uh, in in this time i think that 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 yeah it, it was something really substantial they they have, they had to deal with it and they were just passing on those stories just to remind themselves of like the impact mm -hmm. or like the Trojan war or something like that yeah like a horror let's say just like there was a horrible war it was caused by 
some <laughs> like in the story like a woman was robbed a woman was robbed but i i think then they they started retelling the stories and making it more I interesting mm -hmm. but maybe a core was really true i think even like the Trojan war or something was, might have been true yeah i don't know like wait the trojan war yeah but isn't it like in oh like how you took like a normal a war like the in the yeah okay yeah because like weren't they supposed to be like demigods and stuff yeah yeah okay yeah. like in greek mythology they they all made it with the demigods and then but i think i think here it's important because like greek mythology has uh, like the gods they are human gods like they, mm -hmm. they are not like abstract gods like uh, biblical gods they're just yeah. like they have features of humans like they're greedy they're mm -hmm. they are anxious they are they are very like revengeful and stuff like that mm -hmm. so they they are actually gods like human made gods yeah so. yeah it was, yeah i was um i listened to the audiobooks from stephen fry about uh, mm, right, yeah yeah he he did um mythos and heroes and those are about the different greek gods and just stories from them and then also from like heroes such as hercules what's your favorite from like what, what's your favorite uh takeaway from it or uh, your favorite story i'm trying to remember the name of the person um man i can't remember it's the one where i think maybe it's because i just felt um like it, it felt too relatable. <laughs> too relatable. It was the one where he. Oh, that's good. He was trying to. Uh, I don't Not know if I want to relate to this one. Okay. It's where. <laughs> it was where he was told that like if he rolled the boulder to the top of the hill. Um. Ah, uh, Zisiphus. Yes. He gets he gets punished for. I don't remember. He at least he gets punished probably for, for being like hybris against the gods or hubris. so hubris hu hubris right yeah and then yeah something like that yeah and then it was but like yeah and i think yeah falls and then he has to do it again and again yeah so he would give like i think he would get this like reward if he managed to roll the boulder to the top of the hill mm. and the first time he's like yeah this is really easy and then he <laughs> gets really close and then the boulder rolls away but he's like oh no no i'm so close i'm just gonna just like you just have to keep trying <laughs> and then he is and then he's like sisyphus is still trying to roll the boulder up the hill to this day <laughs> mm. yeah that's the the, the Z sisyphus punishment and the yeah, I think it's an allegory for a lot of people for life or mm -hmm. something like that. They see like whatever they're doing, it makes no sense. And then mm -hmm. it, it, like the ball keeps like rolling back and then they start again and again. Like it's such a strong image still. I mm -hmm. think maybe that's why people still like it. I'm I'm just like thinking of the other stories that I listen to. I, like I really enjoyed listening to it because... The thing though is like I just need to listen to it again to like remember exactly which mm. ones I like. But um, like listening about Medusa, all Medusas, for yeah. This is um, Narcissus was also cool. Mm. Um, and then just like the beginning, like Orpheus. Oh. You read that Orpheus? Hmm? Eurydice and Orpheus. The guy is like the singer who goes into the underworld and he's not supposed to look ah, like right, indeed, right. yeah. And he's like, and he's supposed to like leave with his wife or something. Yeah, and then she can, they, then they could get together, but then he looks at her and because the spell. He's an idiot. Yeah, he is an idiot. <laughs> but that's also like, like how like irrational, like irrational stuff you would do for, for a girl that you're truly in love with. Or Yeah, but it was his wife. It is, yeah. But it just shows that we are not rational, I think, mm -hmm. in, in a lot of contexts. Mm hmm. Yeah, I like the hearing the ones about like Kronos. Oh, the beginning, yeah, yeah. Kronos. And what, Uranus. What, 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 how's it again? Like huh? How's it this? Or like e like eating your children and stuff. Yeah. And there's that painting by. Um, do you remember who painted that one? The one like Kronos eating his children, and it's like super like gross looking, but I remember it really well. Do you know which painting I'm talking about? Mm, yeah, uh, but it's Kronos who's eating his children, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's like a paint. There's like a famous painting, and it's like 
very kind of gross looking of like Kronos eating his children. There, there is a pattern, I think, that in the Greek mythology, I think, when I remember it correctly, like there are these like Kronos and then before Zeus c- comes into play, Kronos, there are two generations of really bad fathers and mm-hmm. like Kronos he eats his children and then he gets tricked by is it Gea? Gea I think Gea yeah. Gaia. Gaia. Ga- Gaia and then like he, uh, they they make the plan or they, they hash out some plans and then then before Zeus really gets into the Olymp with all like the, the famous gods Apollo uh, Dionysus and uh Hera and before all of them like the, this priest story I, I I learned that they, there was these revolts against the the father generation that there was a, a strong father and like the the wife is always trying to protect her children and then it kind of fails and then it's the next one they're trying to revolt against the father and then finally Zeus does it and he climbs into Olympus or so mm-hmm. and that's yeah it's also like myth- mythology I want to learn so much more it's so interesting mm-hmm. yeah you were watching the series on yes Crash Course Crash Course mythology that, that I found very rewarding when you want to learn more about like the because they really uh, is it John Green no his brother no it's not John Green it's actually another guy I forgot his name Anyways, he's trying to um, really explain from with like uh, simple words how mythology works, and but what I liked is that he's also comparing it to different pantheons and different different gods and words, and that's mm-hmm. that was really cool. <laughs> that was cool. Cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are. Those are some studies that I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, uh, yeah, you know, quite a few. I, like my favorite. How much do you know about the Pavlov one? Uh not so much. Okay, I don't know if this is actually true because I don't know if I read anything. So Pavlov is the one with like the the classical conditioning. Classical with the bell. conditioning, yeah. You have a dog. You yeah. ring the bell. You give it food, and yeah. then it learns to salivate when it hears a bell. And then apparently, I don't know if it was Pavlov or if it was somebody else, they took this idea and they wanted to understand the biology of it. Mm-hmm. This is uh, just like a warning. This is going to be a little bit gross. <laughs> um, he like he like mixed up their digestive systems of really? two dogs. Uh huh. And like he wanted to see if getting one dog to like hear the bell would cause the other dog to salivate and he like somehow messed them up uh-huh. by like switching what happened? i think he like switched like the stump like he made like the stomach of one connect to the other what? and i think like he managed and i think it was to show that it like it made it caused like a biological change like a i don't know it was i don't remember exactly but that's what i learned from this experiment which was more than yeah what i you know was expecting <laughs> <laughs> yeah pavlov and milgram and uh, all about authority i know but uh, what i what i really liked was an experiment it was called rats park and the story is that some scientists want to try like the uh, effects i think of stress mainly so they made some they constructed one park for rats that was really like giving them a lot of stress so, so there's these like treadmills and they have to like they are, they are they're very like conflicted they they don't have space basically and they they then they got like food or drugs i think like they got some i, I don't know what it's like op- people op- op- or op- animals opiates. rats oh rats, rats. rats. Okay. yeah so oh, yeah I know this yeah one. and then uh, in a different setting and they would always like make them choose what i think they so mainly 
the 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 upshot of it is that they got like the the rats got addicted pretty fast to uh, the substance opiates or something like that. And then in the, in the second setting, the rats park is much bigger. They have space. They can do whatever. They can flirt or copulate with their women or their their chosen ones, and <laughs> <laughs> the chosen red one. And in the end, they were um, giving the choice if they would take like basically just water or like the water that had some opiates. And most of them didn't get uh, addicted to it, to the substance, because they said like, if you if you have space, if you have a nice environment, le- less stress, you won't get addicted. So they one I think or they you even, just don't choose to. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they have the choice, but if, if the conditions are so bad, let's say when you project it to the human, uh, to our world, maybe, if you live in like harsh conditions, you have a lot of stress with your family or your job, then then you even have like a very tight like living condition, you will be more likely to choose a substance that is not good for you. Mm-hmm. And seems like a, a cliche but if you think about it with these experiments and they call it i think rats park and rats hell also then like or the rats paradise i think it's like utop like rat Ut- utopia or something i don't remember but uh, yeah basically one was like yeah meant to keep rats happy and one was supposed to make them stressed mm-hmm. just let it sink in (laughs) one thing that i we were also talking about in one of our classes was like all the experiments that they did in the concentration camps during Mm. world war ii yeah and i believe they like they collected a lot of data very systematically so what would have been very like valid data but um because of how they were collected they i believe they have been like completely scrapped oh yeah what do you think about that um also to this like conditioning or they so they did things like twin studies i think you know about this don't don't you don't you like they they did like twin studies and yeah i know i know like you okay with this topic? And, uh, i i i don't really know so much about okay. this yeah but you can like what what's your thought on it Okay, first I'll just clarify. So, like, there's that one doctor that's pretty known. Mengele, for, yeah, I know. It. Yeah, for doing, like, Mengele. he did a lot of, like, twin studies. And yeah, he did the twin So, like, the, cold the benefit, yeah, yeah, so the benefit of twin studies is that you have two people who are genetically the same. So, it's, like, the perfect conditions to figure out if something is caused by biology or if it has to do with your environment. Mm. So, and it, he like did horrible things to a lot of twins and, but you collect, he collected very, what would be considered good information because good in, in the sense that it's like in terms of, if you ignore yeah. the ethical part, it's like a very well done um, study. And we I don't believe we have the information of whatever information he like got unless it's like stored somewhere or something. Ah, But I believe like we don't have, we don't have that information because it's because of how unethically it was collected. Yeah. So you are not even like supposed to use it. If if Yeah. I don't think we even know what the results of this stuff is. So on one hand, it's like, well, of course you're not going to um, publish them because it's yeah. unethical, and I and that's the reason. Like, there's a reason why we put a limit to, like, you don't want to encourage these kinds of things. And then the other hand, it's just kind of like, well, these people suffered, and if something good is going to come out of it, it's the results of these mm. experiments. So, I am. What's your take on it? I am um, I I think it's good that it's not published because I think it's nice to have knowledge in these areas especially when you're just so curious about how the world works but for what you had to do to get to that point it's just so like 
like it's I don't know like things like you have the Stanley Milgram and I think it's like okay we learned a lot about obedience and compliance and things like that even but, though also for Milgram it was really debated also what like yeah the, the others some of them got really really psychological problems afterwards yeah so like imagine like having I don't know like I think the stuff that happened to like these these twins because it's it's like concentration camps it's not like they were debriefed or anything after they were taken against their will mm. and tortured and all these other things for the sake of science yeah but and i don't think it's worth it <laughs> yeah i think i think so too i think it's uh i mean here it's yeah I think it still like shapes the way how we deal with like ethics in medical studies for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, like it's just such a delicate topic, but I, I don't think you should use like the results of any of these studies because these people were not there for their own will. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm also very like now some of these like experiments, you don't even know like the outcome. What's the data? Is it does it have a scientific like Freud? Nowadays, Freud like does, is it, does it have a no, it's so it's psychological or standard? I think he with Freud, it was like he never was very scientific with the way he did things. Like he based a lot of his information based on case studies from like a single person yeah i think i think exactly yeah a yeah. lot of it makes sense yeah but it's not like scientifically collected it's it's not yeah and, and freud is a very good example because it it has this connection to because he had these ideas of oedipus complex and electra and so like it's just like vague ideas mm -hmm. that are ve like very interesting i find mm -hmm. them very interesting but i don't I, i think it's more like speculation mm -hmm. and also freud he did a lot of stuff where he dropped like cases with, that were contradicting to his own like theories mm -hmm. and that's not scientific like because you you always have to be rigid in in the way how you how you uh also question your own methodology mm -hmm. but you cannot do like leave stuff like that's what like now psychology had the, these scandals about like fraud with data and stuff like that and mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think that's why a lot of like um at least from what i know a lot of psychological experiments mm -hmm. or yeah experience in psychology are very um like boring more or less because they're really focusing on one thing yeah because it's you really want to control all the other variables so yeah i think especially with the human mind there are just so many things that could be different so you have to be very precise with what you're measuring and that's why it's the things that you hear now aren't as flashy as something like the stanley milgram experiment which yeah, i guess we did, milgram wouldn't be possible we never anymore. clarified what the stanley milgram experiment was yeah so the stan do you want to do it or Okay, so the Stanley Milgram experiment was when they had people come in and they were told that they are not like they didn't know that they are the ones who were being observed. They were say they were they came in as volunteers to help out with an experiment and they had um, somebody who was acting as a, like a game host player or whatever. Um, sit in a box and they were told that this person was hooked up, hooked up to an electronic um, like an electrocution thing where they were given trivia questions and if they got the answer wrong then they would be given um, a shock of electricity mm -hmm. and as the as they answered more questions incorrectly the voltage would assumingly be higher and then they would get a stronger shock um so that's what the person is told but actually they that's not what happened that it was an actor who's being shocked mm. quote unquote and um so the test was to see would that person continue the experiment hearing the cries from another person there are also different variations but yeah. um hearing the cry of the other person, hearing them ask them to stop and being told by the, um, by the lab assistant that like to carry on with the experiment because yeah, yeah. that person was reading the questions and executing 
the shocks. Um, and yeah, it left people traumatized afterwards because they couldn't believe that they allowed themselves to do that. Yeah. Where they thought that they were executing electric shocks that could be t- potentially deadly. And I think, yeah, that's a lot to cope with, like mm. knowing that you've. That you would be willing that you'd, to. That you'd go there. Yeah. Be, because it shows you that maybe your will is weaker than you thought. You you think about you, your own integrity as a, yeah, you're a strong person. If I lived in the Nazi area, I would be the one who was protesting. But then just a guy, because he's wearing a white collar, you're obeying his, his instructions, yeah, like right? Yeah. And it's yeah, it probably, I, I feel really bad for the people that mm-hmm. went through. Because some of them, I think, I think they committed suicide or yeah, something. Yeah, I think there's at least one case. And yeah, but they, they had problems. I mean, knowing that you did stuff that is really not in line with what you are supposed to do, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that would give the maximum like vol- voltage to, to like innocent people or yeah i think just I would, because they were answering a question not correctly and yeah it's, it's I, I would definitely be like totally traumatized from that because i think knowing how like because i think i tend to be a bit compliant compliant <laughs> yeah and i so think somebody tells you do that and you yeah would be, like cause I, the because on the inside i would be like i know that this is wrong but you want to be part of the group no not not even it's just like i don't want people to get mad at me so i was like okay well i guess i have to do it so i'm that type of person and yeah i would like i I would i don't know yeah (laughs) i would i wouldn't handle it well at all yeah i don't like the things like if you're not in this situation you you never know i think like yeah i'm a bit like more rebellious sometimes but i i also don't i, I have no idea how mm-hmm. i would react really I've, yeah. i have no idea it's so scary and it makes you think on yeah a whole bunch of situations where you also did not like show courage some sometimes mm-hmm. yeah. and probably we all have have experienced something like that where you're like oh man I should have said something like yeah. I should have stopped somebody not yeah. scolding someone or whatever like you know situations probably coming yeah. popping up but it's it's just like yeah interesting but I yeah those experiments are just I think I think this the on the other side they show us that we have to be careful and it teaches us a lesson that's why people still relate to Milgram it teaches us a lesson on how malleable and susceptible how 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 easy it is to to fall into like temptation of of authority and 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 stuff like that i have one more experiment that's kind of cute a little bit sad um it also involves what i'm gonna call monkeys because i don't know exactly what species it was yeah but maybe Primates. i don't know if you tell me if you've heard this one so you have a baby chimpanzee mm-hmm. monkey some a sort of animal i don't think it was a chimpanzee it was a baby monkey thing <laughs> a baby monkey <laughs> um given the choice between a frame shaped like a a frame in the shape of a monkey of a mother monkey that had milk and nutrients and stuff and um, a fake monkey that was like comfortable that had like it was more resembling of a mother monkey where it, I think it was covered in like soft material so it wasn't this metallic frame yeah so it was a choice between a comfortable mother looking monkey or a frame like monkey that had milk sure yeah and it chose the one that didn't give it milk it chose the one that gave it comfort instead. <laughs> oh, that's, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> huh. So, I think, yeah, babies just want to be cuddled. <laughs> yeah, they want to cuddle. <laughs> it makes me think, uh, talking about the chimpanzees, about the Ngogo documentary we also watched this. It's, oh, yeah, that's It's about crazy. this pack of, like these bloodthirsty monkeys that are somewhere in the 
I don't know, was it in East Africa? Yeah, I, don't, I think it was in, um, Ru not Rwanda. Was it Rwanda? Mm -hmm. At least it was in East Africa, I'm pretty sure. So there are these scientists observing it. It's called the Ngogo Chimpanzee Project. Over the course of? Over the course of like 25 years now, I think. Mm -hmm. They are spending their whole lives like observing them. And then they found out that they were that they were actually hunting other other um, primates, mm -hmm. smaller ones, smaller monkeys, um, and they were eating them alive. And they were also so like, gross. remember they are like punishing one of the monkeys. The social structure was crazy. The social, yeah, like it seems that chimpanzees have a very strong social structure. They always know who's like the alpha male, mm -hmm. whereas like the other, like like the love making monkeys where they again <laughs> i forgot mm -hmm. the not chimpanzees but bonobos bonobos yeah bonobos like unlike bonobos like the chimpanzees is very strong way also violent and um yeah one of them was a bit not anti-social and then they yeah beating beating him to death pretty pretty much and yeah that was it's that that's something you have to watch i think just yeah, for to understand like where <laughs> how cruel also like you learn that ape, apes are also very cruel what? it was you know for me it's like really fascinating because mm. they really talk about these different um chimpanzees yeah yeah as like um as like almost as real full-fleshed characters yeah and, yeah yeah and it was like okay so this is the bully and then eventually he, yeah, one was the bully. He gets punished by the others for being a bully um, after he had made his way to the top and then was eventually mm. um, usurped by s another chimpanzee. Yeah, there's the bully. Then there was one who was like the 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 connector, or like the social one who was always trying to open up the group. And, and then there was one that like never was really a like uh, me. Maybe I'm just mixing up one that like wasn't really trying to do anything. Like, wasn't trying to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But he like was, he was respected. He was respected, and I think for the hierarchy, what I learned from this was that not the alpha male, where you think the alpha male is like the the top, the the most de desirous position you want to have, but actually the one of the lower ranked chimpanzees, I think in the number 10 or they were I think in total they were uh, more than 200 but he was on number 10 or 7 like he wasn't that high but he had more offspring than the the alpha male mm -hmm. so that's yeah do you want to be the alpha male <laughs> like if Me? if no no and, no, no, and, and <laughs> that, that's what, what you ask yourself when you oh, watch okay. it like it's so dangerous because alpha males then they I never want to be an alpha male because it's just alpha like female alpha Janine. it's just so like a, such a vulnerable position yeah and, and I'm not the type of person who wants like ultimate power anyways and they do it like the the group power they they do it by preening eating their whatever like small bugs they have mm -hmm. and cleaning the uh their uh hair mm -hmm. the, the the fur fur is it fur i don't know like cleaning their their, fur, their, their body yeah. or their body fur or whatever and that's how they keep and maintain the the social uh, s struggle or uh, f away from them, and that's how they form alliances and cooperation also. Mm -hmm. But then I th when the group gets too big, like the chimpanzees, then the rival rivalry started because then they said that the group might break into like subgroups and then it got too, too unclear what's going on within the group. This documentary is on YouTube, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's it called again? Uh, and Google N G O G O Chimpanzee Project, I think. Yeah, it's a really good documentary. That's that's I would that's amazing. It yeah, that was yeah. I th I think I watched it twice, mm -hmm. and yeah, you need some, you need some some moments, some days maybe afterwards. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I we think can talk on forever, like social psychology or what do you think but yeah this stuff is like really interesting for me
Um, I do have a few questions before we end our podcast. Um, I have a phrase from our lovely viewer, Celine, asking you to say this Western Flemish phrase. Oh, right off the bat. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Preuss Lake f- Fertig. Oh, yeah. She also said that you said your, you say your G's too hard. Too harsh. Yeah. So I say, Guten Tag. Guten Abend. Yeah, because she's also Flemish. So Flemish. She, she, so like they really soften. Yeah. She said yeah, their sorry. ages yeah, are I like their I don't want to make, make it too hard. I'm, but she's I'm really... still learning. <laughs> um, and I think this is like a phrase that isn't really translatable. It's one of those things. What does it mean? Um, I think she told me and I forgot. <laughs> I have to ask her. <laughs> is it a saying? Uh, is it, yeah, or? I think so. It's like a Dutch saying. I learned some Russian phrase today. What did you learn? It's called from, your from a colleague, and he told me in Russian they say avos, avos. Okay. And avos is like it's. I like these concept words. Like avos is. It's hard to explain, but I figured it's something like this mentality of like I. I don't care really. I don't. I don't mm. like it. So so it's a word, but it's very like, it's it's like a concept. Like yeah. Whatever, like every, it, it, it's gonna be working out some mm-hmm. some way or the other. So, um, a voice, and is it the same thing as carefreeness or not really? Yeah, I think so. yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Is there a word for that in German? You can say sorglos. You can say just as me egal. Um. We need more. We need viewers like asking us questions. So. I do have one more request. It's to count in to count to ten in the languages that you know. Count to ten. Mm-hmm. Okay, you start. Isa talawa tadlo apalima anim pito bolo siam sampu. Oh, cool. Okay, then ena dio tria tesara pende exi efta ochto deka. That's Greek. Oh yeah, mine. What mine was Filipino, by the way. <laughs> we do more in the next one. I more countings. Yeah, I the, well, that's like the only other language I know aside from German and French, which don't really like aren't that impressive. <laughs> yeah, but Tagalog Filipino that sounds really cool. What do you? What are the phrases you know in Filipino? I know kissy. Uh, what was the first one you said? Uh, Kissy. Mm, what are you trying uh, to say? How are you? Como esta? 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 Como but just not right now. And then, and then, yeah, so there's, yeah, Mahal Kita. Mahal Kita. You ever said? Yeah. Yeah. And then, Makos, Mak, eh, Makos, ne. Ako. Oh, yeah. Ako is I. Ako. And then, what's you? You? Eko. 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 Okay, that's all I have for today. Yep. Did you want to want to close things off with anything? Uh, Yasu, paka paka, spokonia noche, buenas noches, guten Abend, gute Nacht. And don't, if you're waking up, <laughs> don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> and next time we're gonna talk about. We find it out. <laughs> 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 All right, bye. Okay, bye.